Hey, this is Ne. Welcome back on this channel. And today I'm back with another programming tutorial for a program that can help you to trade Fibonacci retracements automatically. So for those of you who do not know Fibonacci retracements, Fibonacci retracements are used if you have a movement in one direction. For example, here we have this down move and some people use Fibonacci retracements to um, use or to, to, to get uh, retracement levels. For example, the 30... 8.2 retracement level would be somewhere I don't know here and here want to here you want to place a um, sell limit order so you can use the Fibonacci tool you can find it either here in your tool um, line already or you can go to insert objects Fibonacci and then you use the Fibonacci retracement then we start at the very top which uh, is our high then we press um, the mouse button here once or twice and then we drag this tool to the level where the price currently is or maybe uh, even to this low here. And then the program that we will write will automatically place the sell limit order at the 38.2 uh, level. You can also change the um, Fibonacci tool and the order will become updated. Also, if we decide to trade buy instead, um, then we can change this and the tool will change the order. So we have this by limit order. Okay, so this is what we will create now together. If you're interested, follow this tutorial and you will learn how to do this in MQL5 code. So let me delete these objects and let's jump right into programming. So to program or to write tools in the MetaTrader 5, we can use the MetaQuotes language editor. You can find it in the MetaTrader 4 if you go to Tools, MetaQuotes Language Editor, or if you just click on this IDE button here. Then in the MetaTrader Editor in the upper left corner, you should find this new button. And if you click it, you can create a new expert advisor, which is already pre-selected. Just click on Next, choose a name, and we can choose like uh, FIBO, Trader, whatever you like. Then click on Next, Next and finish and this will create a brand new expert advisor for you so first of all i will uh, delete the first lines which are these gray lines and the properties because they have absolutely no effect on the functionality of the program the gray lines are just a information for the programmer but we don't need this for th such a small and short program then personally i like to rearrange my curly brackets for these functions like this you can do so but you don't have to so let's um, jump right into programming. So what, what do we need here? Since we are working with objects in the chart and we want to react to the objects, we do not really need the on tick and the on dnit function. So I will remove them. And the program, if we compile it here using this compile button, it still works and it's still compiled into a um, executable MetaTrader 5 program. So instead, we will need the um on chart event function so just go below your on init function that you have here and write void on chart event and then it's already suggested here already so you can click enter on your keyboard and it will um, show you the on chart event name so you have to write it like this with a capital letter o capital letter c and capital letter e and then it should be violet like this. If you then move your cursor inside of this uh, function name, you can go to tools, oh no, sorry, to help, MQL5 reference, and this should open the on chart event um, entry in the MQL5 reference. Here we will find the complete signature for the on chart event because it's not only the name of the function, we also have four parameters. So if we select all of this and right click and press copy, we can now paste it here and this will give us the complete signature please be aware that there's a mistake in the reference so this closing bracket is not allowed here so we will have to remove it now if we compile this we still have a problem because it says on chart event must have a body and this is what we can easily add by re uh, removing this semicolon and then adding a opening and closing curly bracket and if we close again uh, if we compile again you can see there's no error anymore so what does this on chart event function do the function is called whenever there is a um, chart event in the chart so the program 
If we compile this, we can activate, activate it already because in your MetaTrader 5, you will now see it in the navigator. If you go to your navigator, you will find um, under expert advisors here, you will find the FIBO trader. And you can just drag and drop it on any chart, click on OK, and it's now running in the chart. So whenever something is going on here with any object, like a line, it will trigger this on chart event function. And it will not only trigger this function, but it will also give us these four variables filled with the um, correct information. So if we use a print statement here inside of this on chart event, you can see I can just print these four parameters and we will see the values that are stored inside of these four parameters. So if we compile this again, and if we go back to our chart, open the experts journal in the toolbox, we can see if we now create a line, we get the ID, the uh, D param, no, the L parameter, the D parameter, and the S parameter. And you can see this is really interesting because whenever I change the line or drag and drop it around, the on chart event function is also triggered. Of course, we do not want to work with trend lines, but this also works with uh, the Fibonacci tool, for example. So if we create this tool here, you can see we also get all the information that we need. So what, what, what information do we get here specifically? First of all, we get the ID, which tells us what happened. And what we saw here already is, when we create the FIBO tool for the first time, it triggers ID number two. This is here the first parameter that we get in this chart event function. Also, if we move around this FIBO uh, tool, we also trigger it with the ID number two. So what we want to do is, we want to specifically look for this ID number two. So we could write something like, if ID is equal to two, then we want to do whatever is written inside of the body of this if statement here. So we could, for example, print a move or print statement here. And also, we can look into the on chart event function again in the journal and you can see the parameters are also explained here. So you can see this is an event ID from the enum chart event enumeration. So if we click here, we can see that there are several of these um, chart events and a good way to print this is to say that this ID is a enum chart event type like this and then you can say enum to string to print this in a readable form. So if we compile this again, and if we trigger this event again, you will see it now says that it is the chart event object drag. So we can also say if ID is equal to chart event object drag, then we want to uh, execute whatever is in the body of this if statement. Also, um, the chart event object drag, it's a part of the enumeration that is used to um, yeah, uh, specify the ID here. If you want to learn more about all of these things, um, like enumerations, um, data types, etc., etc., check out the link in the video description and you will find a complete course for MetaTrader 5 programming. In this video, I will just quickly describe how, how to write this specific program. So, now we know that we um, execute this whenever the uh, um, um, uh, object is changed. We still have to figure out if the object is a FIBO object. So what we can do next is we can check if, and then we say object get integer, because this function, we can look it up again in the, whoops, Allah, in the reference, it will give us a information about any object and you can see all the possible information um, or yeah things that we can request here and we also have this object property type so it can be any of these objects so what we are doing here is we want to check for an object in the current chart with the name of this S parameter because as you maybe realized the S parameter of this on chart event function it also 
holds the name of the object. So the name is H1 FIBO uh, 3580, and this is the S parameter here. So we can use this as a name for this object, and then we want to check the object property type, and we want to check if it is equal to object FIBO. And um, yeah, in this case, maybe we also want to move this print statement here so it's not executed too often. And then, yeah, now we found this uh, FIBO. Or, so what, what is happening here now is this, we get there only if we move a FIBO object. So for example, if we have another trend line, and if this trend line is moved, whoops, Allah, this should not happen. Maybe I forgot to compile here. So let me compile the program again. So the latest changes are applied. And let me do the same thing, create a, a trend line. And if I move this trend line around now, you can see the text is not printed in the expert journal. But if I move our trend line, everything is still working because we now check if the object that is or that trigger this on chart event function if it is a FIBO object. And in this case, we want to print this stuff. So now what we want to do next is we want to get the... So for all of our calculations, we need the price of this FIBO uh, tool here. So we will actually need two prices. First of all, we will need the price at the zero level and we need the price at the 100 level. And these prices, uh, we can find them for this specific... Uh, FIBO object because if you go to the properties you will see there are parameters with two prices and we can get these two prices going to our source code using the um, uh, object get double function and again we specify the chart where the object is the name it's s param again and we have object prop price and now we have to add another property modifier because we have two prices. So for the first one, we will use zero. Then we will simply copy this line. Whoops, Allah, not like this, but like this. And then we will have as a last parameter for the object get double, we will have modifier one. So now we should get these prices here. Um, yeah, let me just quickly print the prices so you can see what's going on. Price zero and price one. So you can see if we compile this and if we go back to our, to our program here, and if I change something, we now print these two prices. And you can see this is price um, zero and at 100 there is price one. So um, yeah, I think this is um, pretty easy to understand. So now we have these two prices. Now what we want to do next is we want to check if price zero is below price one. And in this case, we have to set a sell limit order, right? So what we want to do is, we want to check if price zero is smaller than price one. And in this case, we want to sell limit. Also, we want to check else if price zero is greater than price one. In this case, we need a buy limit. So now we have the um, the, the trigger pretty much for our, um, for our positions or orders and now we have to place these orders. Whenever we place orders, the easiest way in MediaTrader 5 programming is to use the C trade class. So you have to write at the very top of your program, you have to write hashtag include and then in these uh, smaller than and greater than signs, you write trade slash trade dot mqh and this will give us the option to create or use this C trade um, object or this this is a object variable which is called trade and it is of type C trade this is a uh, yeah belongs to the topic of object oriented programming I will not go into detail here but again if you're interested check out the link in the video description and you will learn everything in the complete course so now we can use this trade object here to say trade dot um, wait like this, we say trade dot sell limit. And then we can choose the volume for this position. And maybe we make this a input parameter. So we can say input double lots 0 0.1. And also we will need another input variable here for the retracement. So let's say we want the um, 38 
0.2 retracement. So now we can use the lots from this input variable here and wait. There it is. So we use the lots and now we need a price where this order should be located. And for this, we need this retracement input variable. So we will have to calculate this price first. So what we do here is we say the new price for our order is at um, uh, price zero plus, and then we have price one minus uh, price zero multiplied with the retracement divided by 100. So we're just adding the percentage of this range to the to the lower price. And now it's always a recommended or a good idea to uh, round this level before before you use it for a order. So you can use the um, normalized double function for this, and it will round the value to a, a specific precision. And uh, for this, we will use the amount of digits for our current chart symbol. So now we use this price for the order. Then we have the symbol. We will simply use the chart symbol. We don't need a, a stop loss and TP here. Then there's the expiration time as the next parameter for the sell limit order. And this is order time good till cancel. So it will just stay there forever until it is cancelled. So we also don't need a expiration time. So it's zero. And the order comment, this is important. Here we will use the S parameter. So the order will have the order comment, which is the same as the name of this uh, Fibonacci retracement. So if we compile this program, you can see there is no error. And if I now um, yeah, move my uh, object again, we should see something going on, like maybe an order, but we don't see it. So let me check this again. So um, the price zero is smaller than price one, right? Um, let's go here. Price zero is smaller than price one. I think this is okay. Wait, let me print the prices again. Price zero, price one. Let's see what's going on here. So price zero, no, okay, somehow it changed now. So price zero is um, the price up here. Mm. So I kind of just have to move around everything here. So it's like this. And then, of course, we will have to add the operation or calculation to price one. Okay, now, then since I'm changed everything, moved everything around, now you can see if I trigger the on trade, uh, on chart event function again, we see the order. Um, yeah, this order is not really changed if I move the FIBO. And we will see another order every time that I move this uh, FIBO line. So th this is something we will have to take care of now. So what we have to do before we place a new order, we have to check if there is an existing order. And this is really easy. So we can just check all the orders in, um, in, this, uh, in this account. And then if we find an order, we just, um, yeah, maybe we just cancel it first. So, um, oh no, we will modify the order if we find one. So what we want to do is we want to say we create a variable which is named order ticket and is initialized with zero. Then we use a for loop to loop through all the orders in this account. Uh, minus minus like this. And if we find an order, or we, we get the order ticket for every order like this, and then we check if order get string, and then we say order comment, if the order comment is equal to the S parameter, then we know that this is a order that belongs to this FIBO retracement object pretty much. And in this case, we just want to update this order ticket variable 
here with the order ticket of the order that we just found here. So now we have um, the order ticket of an existing order. So before we open a new order, we can check if order ticket is smaller or equal zero because, because if it's not, then um, yeah, we, we, we kind of have an order already, right? And then what we can do here is we check if order ticket is greater than the zero. And in this case, we want to, um, we try to select this order using this order ticket. And if we are able to select an order, then we want to check. First of all, we want to check if order get integer, order type, if it is a order type by limit order, because in this case, we want to delete it, right? So what we're doing here is we say if trade order delete, we will delete the order that we just found here, and then we reset the order ticket variable. But if it's not a buy limit order, then we can be pretty sure that it is a sell limit order, but we can of course also check for this. Um, like this, order type cell limit, like this. So if it is a cell limit order, we don't have to send a new order, but we will modify the existing order. So what we do here is we say trade, order modify, then we have the order ticket here. We will choose the new price, and for the SL and TP, we will choose the existing um, uh, SL and TP of the, uh, of the order. So what we want to do is we want to get um, these values here first. Order TP or order SL is equal to order get um, double, order stop loss, and order TP is equal to order get double, order TP. And now we can use these variables here for our order modify function. So order SL, order TP, TP, and then it's still order, good till cancel, expiration is still zero, and stop limit, we don't need this. Okay, so if we compile the program again, you can see there's no error. And if we now uh, trigger the, the, the order again, you can see if we don't have an order, we place an order. And if we uh, do have an order, we simply modify the existing order. Also, since we are using the TP, oh, this was not correct. Wait, let me um, uh, let me place ATP and stop loss here. So maybe just use a stop loss somewhere and take profit somewhere. Modify. Um, wait, let me move the TP and stop loss somewhere. And now if I change this, um, you will see only the open price is changed and stop loss and TP stay where they are. So this is kind of cool. So you can just modify the uh, position open price. And yeah. So now this is kind of working for the sell positions already, but what happens if we try to open a buy position? This does not work yet, but what we can do is we can simply copy the code that we have here, like all of it, right click, copy and paste it here for the buy signal. So we paste it here and now for this uh, buy signal we just have to change some of these operations. So what we do is we calculate the new price. This is a little bit different because now we um, subtract from price one and we will subtract price one minus price zero. The rest is still the same. We round everything. We search for an open order. We check if we have an open sell limit order. In this case, we delete it, uh, reset the order ticket. And if we find a buy limit order, then we want to modify it, right? And yeah, order stop loss and order TP. We don't have to change something here because we get it up here. And um, yeah, if order ticket is smaller or equal to zero, we want to say 
we want to open a buy limit order and the rest can also stay the same, I think. So now if we um, move our FIBO down here, you can see we now open a buy limit order also. Um, yeah, it's just modified. And if we move it here again, we see the sell limit order. So you can see now we have a complete working program. Okay, this time it did not send an order. I don't know why. Oh, there it is. It just took one or two seconds. But yeah, you can see program is working just fine. And this is how you can achieve it using the uh, on chart event event handler. Actually, we don't need the on init function, so we can remo remove it. Um, so yeah, also since we uh, in included these two input uh, variables, we can go to the FIBO trader here if we double click it in the upper right corner and we can just change these values. So maybe we want to trade the 61.8 instead and the lot size should be 0 0.2. So if we click on OK, we can see if I try to trigger a sell uh, order, it's now at the 61.8 level and it is with 0.2 lots and same goes for the buy orders. So you can see this program can be used and also if we have um, two FIBOs maybe, uh, two Fibonacci levels like this, um, you can see this is also working. Okay, so in the end I will show you the code once again like I will just slowly scroll through it so you can copy it if you like. Um, make sure you don't forget get to include here, then create these two input variables, create the C-trade um, object variable here. Then the on chart event signature has to look exactly like this. So you need the, the name, only one opening bracket for the parameter list. You need these four parameters, one closing bracket and one opening bracket for the body. And then, yeah, we just check if a object was changed, so if it was dragged along in the chart. If this is the case, then we check if it was a FIBO object. If yes, then, yeah, we just print the four parameters here of this function. We get the prices of this FIBO object. Then we search for a existing order that has the order comment of, which is exactly the name of this FIBO object. If we find an order, we get the order SL and order TP. And then, yeah, we just check in, in which direction this FIBO um, object was created, like um, yeah, where, where the two prices are. Then uh, if we find that there's a sell signal, then we calculate the new open price for the order. We check if there is an existing order. If there's a buy order, we delete it. If there's a sell order, we modify it. <clears throat> modified and if there is no sell order we simply create a new one also if there's a buy signal yeah we just do the opposite so we just calculate the price we check if there's a sell order um, we modify existing buy orders and if there is no order at all we just create a new buy limit order and this is so let me know what you think about this also, if you're interested in learning how to write code for the MetaTrader 5, check out the link in the video description. Uh, in the complete course, I explain everything like on an absolute beginner level. So you can learn how to use different variables, uh, how to use um, data structures, functions, etc., etc. These are the things that I don't explain in every YouTube video, but you will learn it there for sure. Also, if you check out the link in the video description, you will find a complete content list so you know exactly what you can expect from the MetaTrader um, learning courses. So thanks for watching, have a great time and yeah, good trades. Bye-bye.